This is a video about drops, or bass drops, or musical buildups and releases, or musical tension and climaxes. Now I've been making a damn living as an electronic musician for over 20 years. I've played hundreds of nightclubs and EDM festivals, yet somehow, at least until the last week or so, I have never intentionally made or utilized a drop. In fact, I was quite oblivious. I did not know the first thing about them. But according to scientific research on the topic, which there weirdly is, this may have put my music at a disadvantage when it comes to listener enjoyment. So get in my passenger seat here and come on this journey with me. I guess if you're in America, you want to get in on this side. And we're going to learn a little bit about what a drop is, how it both works musically for the musician and psychologically for the listener. Then I'm going to make my first drops ever, and I have a really, really good coach. Bill Day, or better known as Mr. Bill. Mr. Bill here is a highly acclaimed, extremely technical electronic musician with millions of drop-hungry listeners. He is also an excellent teacher with thousands of musicians becoming Ableton savvy through his music production programs. He's also brutally honest. He's also Australian. Anyway, what is a drop? <laughs> It would be impossible to pinpoint when the first piece of music deliberately used tension and release, but my best guess would be that it would be at least 45,000 years ago. Now, this section could be an amazing educational journey, but if I play you any examples, YouTube's content ID will hire a SWAT team to burn my house down, so I'll just mention a few notable things. So Buddy Rich's big band, especially in songs like Diabolus, utilized tempo changes and beat drops extremely well, and that's from the late 1960s. Then one can note plenty of beat drops in disco and funk over the 70s. Now the bass drop, or the one that is such a big deal these days in dubstep and EDM, can be most directly attributed to Miami bass, most notably two live crew combined with a TR-808 drum machine in the late 1980s. About 1,300 miles north of there, in a seemingly parallel universe, Chicago House and Detroit Techno was structured in a way where instead of a song having a verse-chorus-verse-chorus -chorus structure, it would have more of a build-up and a climax. And then within a few years, the structure would get mirrored in Europe's rave scene as electronic music continued evolving. Then around 2005, a subgenre of electronic music called UK Garage started to rely heavily on the bass drop and dubstep was born. But the older UK dubstep and grime sounded a lot more subtle and soulful, in my opinion, than what most people would think of now when they think of dubstep. A few years after taking off in the UK, the genre would travel to the USA and receive testosterone injections. I apologize in advance to bro step or American aggro dubstep musicians or producers for what I'm about to say, and I guess to listeners because this might be one of those things that you can't unhear once it's mentioned. And I also just don't want to seem like an asshole, but to be completely honest, a lot of that aggressive style of bass music especially in the last five to 10 years, sounds to me a lot like baby music. It's like sound design and kindergarten melody clashing together. And so that'll build up and then you'll have this really lame quote like, this is fresh. It's time. And then the drop is often this wide variety of different sounds on some sort of audio carousel. And I feel like it's so close to being like one of those old Fisher Price toys that plays the farm animal sounds. Go, 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 go. The driving bass line. <laughs> Now it needs to be pointed out and reaffirmed that this type of music that I'm ranting about and roasting and describing to you makes up a very small percentage of overall bass drops in the electronic music landscape. However, when the average person thinks of a bass drop or dubstep, like somebody who listens to pop music or maybe hip hop or classical or rock, they think of that extreme example. But that cheesy bro step subgenre still has a pretty sizable audience and a lot of people really like it and science may actually explain why. Now the drop has been legitimized by studies in academia. The University of Kent wanted to get to the bottom of this, so they studied the brain activity of 36 participants to see exactly what the drop is doing to them. And what do you know? The conclusions of the study suggested that the combination of predictability and surprises that drops typically utilize may elicit high and powerful positive emotions, such as excitement. Now naturally, now I really wanna see a study of EDM drops compared to classical music or jazz or something, so 
if anybody has a couple of MRI machines that they don't need, send them right over. But okay, this is starting to make a little bit of sense to me. If Miami base is a shot of espresso, then aggressive dubstep would be near the lethal dose of methamphetamine. So these genres that exist just to make the biggest and baddest drops seem to be honed in on doing whatever it takes to make the listener feel those positive emotions. And when it's framed that way, I think I'm down with it, at least enough to take a stab at it in my own way. This is like a 2007 UK bass drop. I wish I could get away with that now. <laughs> Harmer is nuts. Armor is crazy. <laughs> So Mr. Bill has given me a lot of examples and advice and tips, and I would say the biggest takeaways that I got from him were to concentrate on creative rhythm changes and then to utilize pseudo drops that would then build to the real drop. So basically familiar territory, an expected surprise, but maybe one that pushes the envelope a little bit harder than the listener would expect. So now all of a sudden this trend that so many of us musicians lift our noses at is actually pretty fucking challenging, especially when you consider or how many musicians have seemingly perfected it. So I'm gonna take a whole bunch of bass sounds and I'm going to record them into Edison here and then I will be cutting them up the way that you would cut up a break beat or something like that. <laughs> Now would be a good time to open up Slice X and turn these into a bunch of individual samples. So tons of automation and plugins and loops and clips. And we have a song and we have a massive build, but we don't have a drop yet. But I did cut up all those different pieces in Slice X. Nothing. That's all I got to do now is actually make, you know, the whole point of the song. Just so you know what I'm doing here, I'm dragging and dropping drum samples and found sounds into FPC. And then in FPC, I like setting very carefully curated cut or mute groups. This allows me to have very precise control when programming drums in the FL Studio piano roll. <laughs> Okay, so I'm officially out of time here. To give you an idea of what is going on here, drop two waves is just slice X, right? And it's just a bunch of different. And so it's just a bunch of different things recorded into Edison from Harmer. And then I could kind of do crazy things with that, like. And so FPC and Slice X are working together in harmony. And this is sort of the master pattern here and I, everything else is just kind of messy. Some waves that are mostly just backup and of course vocals. And then see this big mess of lines that I drew, that is all automation. And so if we go into piano roll, you'll see all of the different automation parameters that I have <laughs> put throughout this track. And there are a plenty. So I spent a little bit over 12 hours, well, 12 extremely focused eyeball burning hours on my drop. 
And while I feel like I could have worked on it for another few weeks or maybe even months, I was also really excited to not work on it anymore. Now, conveniently, a little bit over a year ago, I helped sell Mr. Bill on the Georgia dream of home ownership, and now he's my neighbor here just north of Atlanta. It is now time to take this bass drop of mine over to his studio and see what he thinks. By the way, Bill is an extremely honest person. There's no way he's going to fluff up his reaction to make me feel any better or for the purpose of this video. I think a lot of musicians in outside of electronic music and then in genres like IDM and stuff look down on EDM and look down on drops and they're like oh that's what I would do if I were lazy and I've always been like I can't do that at all I've it's tried. harder man it's way harder like yeah it, I, I think like doing everything in a song is easier than doing like barely anything in a song yes it's like way it's like almost and and I feel if I like I'm not saying this is your case but for my case when I'm putting everything in a song to try and make it sound better, I look at it as like a writing crutch. It's like the idea is not strong enough and therefore I'm like trying to add yeah. more and more ideas to it to make it interesting. Whereas if you just have like an extremely good core idea, you don't need to really add anything to it. It's like just good. Yeah, and, and that like minimalism <laughs> is, is actually really difficult. The structure of like a wind up and then delivery and then maybe another wind up and a delivery is just so foreign to me. Like I didn't really think about it until I made this video of how different it is. dubstep producer am i <laughs> today so, to me it's still like idm yeah it, it goes from this 4-4 four, four thing like da -da -na, da -na -na -na. and what i would expect as a drop is just like big chords just going wum, 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 wum. <laughs> yeah like just really simple and like just big and well produced and stuff but it like goes into an arm and break and then all glitchy and stuff that's also gonna be like playlists of the best drops and all that stuff <laughs> and it kind of reminds me of like, like I wonder what that would do on something like Spotify, where, so for example, the my albums have a little bit more harmony, harmony. they generally probably be, they're probably a little bit more nostalgic to the average listener or something, and so they might get more plays, they might exist in the background. This is a little bit harder to have as background music, and also it might fare like 
a really good comedy album where you listen to it twice and then you've heard it and now you're looking for something else to laugh again to get that yeah, dopamine rush. I kind of feel a little bit that way about drops. It's like the the lifetime of a drop is like a few weeks. Yeah. And then it's like, all right, who's going to do the next sick drop? Well, I just sit general. back on, with that <laughs> piano music and just... <laughs> so one one to ten, how would you rate my uh, drop? The, the real drop, not the this practice one? one. Yeah. Honestly, I'd rate it probably like a four or five. Yeah. It's not a very good drop in my opinion. I mean, it, it's an awesome piece of music, but it's like a drop. I yeah. I think it's a very good drop. Yeah. Just it's interesting musically, I think, but it doesn't like give me that full like drop dopamine rush where I'm like, what yeah. The fuck? yeah. I didn't feel it either. Dear mom and dad, I wish that I had good news to share, but my bass drop has scored a four out of ten. There is simply no easy way of putting it. I have failed at bro step. But the story does not end there. Musicianship is a vicious cycle occasionally spun by the cold hands of karma. For this may just merely be a reminder of how brutally difficult being a musician can be. I remember I used to like your music so much that I like remade one of your tracks for a university assignment. I sent it to you and your response was just like, you got the night notes. That was like your only response. <laughs> I was like, cool dude, thanks. <laughs> I spent like, like literally like two days in the studio, like recording all of the drums with my brother. And like, I got somebody to like play the string parts. I did like, like it was, it was like a, um, a project for university and I was doing an audio engineering degree. So we had to like do all the parts and like record them all. We couldn't use synthesizers. So I was like, I'm gonna try and create that, but like with all instruments. And yeah, then I sent it to you. I was like, hey, check this out. And you were like, you got the night notes. <laughs> I don't even know what that means to this day. What do you even mean by that? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> but I'm sorry. Okay, so things I learned. Firstly, if you're a musician or producer who looks down on dubstep or bro step or any type of EDM as an easy genre, do yourself a favor and try to make a complete song, because you'll be humbled. On the other hand, surprisingly, to be completely candid, I don't like drops any more or less than I did before making this video. I was kind of hoping that I would be inspired to include more suspense and payoff in my own music intentionally, but I think that would just turn into something more methodical and less artistic, which is something that I already struggle with. But I think the most important takeaway for me is that I've gained a whole lot of respect for dubstep and EDM producers. Not that I didn't respect them already, but this is just reinforced that this isn't some easy to follow recipe. It's incredibly innovative and at the forefront of sound design. Even though I probably didn't make a good drop for what it's worth, I'm glad I tried. So viewer, what did you think of my drop from one to 10? <laughs> Go ahead, be honest. And more importantly, what did you think of this video? Because if you liked it or if you learned anything, I will gently yet shamelessly remind you that this channel has no sponsors and that this channel operates as a nonprofit organization. If you would like to access a super healthy Discord community with monthly songwriting challenges, pro audio coupons and discount codes, unreleased music, field recordings, and much, much more, my Patreon starts at $1. But thank you for joining me on my drop journey. And whatever you do, keep creating. Bye.